A good evening to you, our esteemed viewers. Thank you so much for watching Family TV. We really credit you for the time you've given in since morning up to now that you're watching Family TV. Thank you so much. And here we are, as it, or it happens every single Friday at exactly 7 p.m. Health Port is the program. And here we are, the panel is full. Mebo Murungi, our sign language interpreter, Edwin Austin Mukalazi is my name. And today we have Sister Gertrude Sentongo from Kawempe National Referral Hospital. She works uh, in the family care unit and there is a lot of uh, things they do. However, today we are going to look at family planning since it is part of what they work on in the family care unit of Kawempe National Referral Hospital. Sister Gertrude, you're most welcome. Thank you. Kindly greet our esteemed viewers. Uh, good afternoon to you. Good evening. Good evening to you. Uh, my name is Amsento Gertrude from Kawempe National Fellow Hospital in Family Health Clinic. We are indeed grateful that you've come to educate our viewers. So, uh, Sister Gertrude, how can we can you define family planning? Um, family planning is a voluntary decision of an individual or a couple to exercise their fertility rate, knows how many children to have, how to do it and when to do it, and what to use so that they can achieve their reproductive goals. Why do you say it is voluntary? Yeah, because there, there is no coercing someone to use family planning. You have to opt your, for your own, for yourself, after getting full information about family planning. Oh, you first give people full information about exactly. family planning, yes. and then they either take the, they, they take what you've told them, or they leave it there. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. And then um, family planning is why? Because uh, in a layman's language, when you talk about family planning, we now uh, break it down as uh, planning for the family yes. and how is this related to the medical uh, to the medical side yeah because you know uh, in Uganda our fertility rate is high and the death rate from mothers during childbearing after delivery children is also high so one family planning is one of the keys reduce the maternal mortality, mobility, and infant rate. So that's why, why you relate it with the health. And you need it so that you, you space your children. You don't deliver every year. In other yeah. words, the, the whole instance of family planning is connected to spacing children. Exactly. And you not, not only spacing, but even to know how many can you afford to handle. You know these days, education is not easy. Cost of living is high. Taking children to school is also not easy. There's a lot of money. It's now a uh, uh, kindergarten kid is taking one million plus. So you have to know how many children can I afford to handle? And then how is the space in between? So that even the mother who is producing those children can rest can get peace, eh? can be healthy again to get another baby. The shelter also for those children, all that is needed so that the family is well catered. Uh, Sister <coughs> Gertrude, there is one thing uh, I want to get now. Since you work, uh, you, you attend to very many mothers uh, in Kawente who come to seek for your advice. Uh, in family planning, what is the recommended spacing rate that you, you tell these mothers? How, um, when should they uh, give birth? Every after how many years? At least every, the least, every after two years. The least? The least. Every after two years, you are free to conceive again. By the time you deliver another baby, this one is almost going to school in three years now. Mm. Okay. Since you've told us that it is uh, more directly or directed to child spacing. What are some of these family planning methods that we can talk about? 
Uh, the family planning methods we have, we can, we can, I can talk about right, right now, we have the long term, those ones which you use and you take long time without producing. And we have the short term, those ones which takes a, a, short, a short time, short period, then you get another family planning. I think we then start we with have, the short term. Then, okay. Hey, then is we there have, another category? Yes, there is also a permanent one. Mm? A permanent family planning is also there. You stop completely. So now we start with the short term. The short term. Yeah, since they are short. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> and the short term family planning contraceptives, we have the injection which is given every after three months. The injection hippoprovera is given every after three months. You come back to the hospital and they give you another shot. Then we have the pills, which are supposed to be taken every day on a specific time. When you choose to swallow the pill, you have to swallow the pill every day on a specific time. Like if you are swallowing it at 8 in the evening, you have to swallow it at 8 every day. You maintain evening. that time. Yes, you have to maintain that time. If you don't For maintain... How long? Until you want to produce again. Yeah. When you feel like uh, getting pregnant, you stop. But it's supposed to be every day. When you keep on changing, you'll conceive. What is what is the science there? That if uh, maybe I started taking, uh, when I was taking it at 8, mm -hmm. and then I now drop, I take it at 4 mm -hmm. p.m. The, what, what happens? The way those pills are designed, if you take it at 8, you have to take it, it is 4 24 hours. Yeah. When the 24 hours are over, it stops working. It's also over, you know, but it's no longer there. So now you have to take another pill every after 24 hours. Meaning when I alter the time, there are chances that the 24 hours will elapse without me knowing and then... You will conceive definitely. Okay. Because these pills work like eh, preventing the eggs from coming out of the suck. You see with the reproductive system, we have the uterus, that's the womb, then we have the cervix, that's the mouth of the womb, which opens when someone is going to produce, deliver. We always tell them, don't push, the way has not yet opened. So that's the mouth of the womb. And then we have the tubes, which transports the, 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 the femoral ovum, that's the egg. The fallopian tubes? Yes. Then also, at the end of the fallopian tubes, we have the, Over. the ovaries, whereby the eggs are there in the ovaries. So now, these pills, let me say the hormonal contraceptives, they prevent the eggs from coming out. When you forget taking, when you go or when you go over time, the eggs will come out. So anytime you meet your partner, you are bound to conceive. Does it mean that if maybe I'm taking an injection, mm -hmm. eh, if I take it on the 22nd mm -hmm. of April um, at, at 12 mm -hmm. midday, mm -hmm. I have to go back uh, on the same date at the same time in hospital to get another injection? Mm, with the injection again, for it we count, in the medical, we count weeks, not months. So we count 12 weeks, and three months is more than 12 weeks. Mm. So we can't count 12 weeks. That's when you are supposed to come back in the hospital. But remember, this injection is already injected in you. It's a high dose other than the pills. So we say you have to come in the hospital that they will have given you to come back. That's after 12 weeks. But again, since it's there, you may not conceive exactly after that date, other than the pills. The pills. But again, you don't give chances that come any other day when you feel <laughs> like it. No, you have to come on the specific date which we have given you. Because even we give you the card so that you don't forget the appointment. So you have to keep the appointment also, very important. Because our body behaves differently, we have different hormones. Mm. But someone with pills conceives very fast, 
than someone who is using the injection. So it's a risk with the pills when you keep on forgetting other than the injection. Is there any other short-term method uh, besides the two? No. Apart from condoms, maybe. Condom. Condoms, uh, and maybe the rhythm method, the monobids. What are monobids? Uh, the moods, it's a, a bead which is designed according to the calendar. Which calendar? It's a, the, the usual calendar which we have. And you, when you are using it, you have to do the calendar. It's difficult to describe it when you don't have it. I wish I knew it would have come with it and everybody gets to see how it is. I even have explained how it works when exactly it's there. Is it, is it the same as safe days? Almost, almost, it's almost the same. But this one, the safe days, uh, the, the moon bead is designed to everybody. But the safe days, you have to, like, to keep three months, you know, not three months, every, uh, whenever you get a period for about three months or six months. Then you bring it to a medical personnel, then you start adding, dividing. But subtracting what, then we tell you exactly your safe day. But the monobid is designed for everybody. Okay. That's the difference, but it's the same as safe days. But some other time we shall invite you and you, 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 you demonstrate it it's so okay. that we can see it. It's okay. Yeah. Next time you tell me I come with all my gadgets. Of course. All the family <laughs> planning methods so that people get to see how it looks like. Because most of our people, they don't know how this family planning yes. looks like. Then what about the permanent, sorry, the, the, the long-term family The long-term family planning methods, we have the IUD, the copper T, IUD, which is put in the uterus. Mm. Dr. The, at, um, at, at at that point, mm. uh, let us go for a short commercial break, and then when we come back, we start from the IUDs. Okay. Yeah. As you think about the Lord just taking over your case and you are no longer in the midst of it, and He says, Fear not. Demons from the mountains, scream and leave. In the name of Demons the from, the, from the graves, scream in and leave. In the name, in the name of Jesus. Welcome back from that commercial break. The program you're still watching is Health Port. Remember, this program is brought to you by Makerere University School of Public Health, together with Family TV. Adrian Austin Mkalas is my name. Mebo Murungi, our sign language interpreter, and Sister Gertrude Sentongo from um, Kawente National Referral Hospital, and she's here to take us through family planning, Sister. Before we went for the commercial break, you had introduced the IUDs the and IUDs. the copper T. The IUDs, the copper T specific. Mm. The IUD is the copper T. Copper T, so it is the same thing. Yeah, it is the same thing. What is it? Because we normally hear IUDs, IUDs. What are these IUDs? IUDs, it's also one of the family planning methods. It's non hormonal. That means it is, doesn't have, can I say, a hormone which circulates in your body. For it, it has copper. It's a T. It's called a copper T because it's an a T shape. And on that T shape, it's a plastic T with copper well allowed. And that's the medicine which it acts to. So that acts in somebody's womb 
in order not to conceal. There is a lot of science yeah. in that compartment. Yeah, and that's why I told you that it is very easy to explain everything when you are looking at it, other than telling someone we can picture it. How is this? How does it look like? So now that property is inserted in somebody's womb and it is stayed there for 12 years. 12 years? Yes, but when you feel like you're conceiving, you can always get it out and you conceive. Okay. Then which are the long term? There is also uh, the implants. The implants, we have the implanon, implanon in XT which works for three years. And then we have Jadel. The implant next is one stick, or one implant, one load. And it's for three years. And the Jadel, there are two loads, and they are for five years. Why not six, since they are two? <laughs> <laughs> it is designed in that five years. So, uh, are these what we call implants, exactly. the ones you see with ladies on their arms? Yeah, the implants are inserted on the upper arm. Why is it inserted on the upper arm? And what is that science? The and how science, does it connect to the ovary now? I think that, will, that is the, the best place which was selected to insert the implants. First of all, the, the one who has been inserted can feel it easily and it cannot be visible by anybody. Eh? And then even the pattern, it's not easy the pattern to see that those implants, see, and even touching. But it's you can see the scar. The, the the, the, it's the space which is less seen or touched by the, the, by, by the pattern. So maybe that was the part which was selected very convenient for the woman okay. who's using family planning. Any other long-term method? What about the permanent? The permanent method, see, we have the tube irrigation for the ladies and the vasectomy for men. I think you draw more light on, on the two. On the two? Yeah. Um, the tube irrigation for women, they put medicine so that you don't feel pain down just in the lower abdomen. They cut, then they get the tubes, and then they tie the tubes so that the eggs, the sperm and the ovum don't meet. So that's how that is done. And then vasectomy? The vasectomy also, they just cut those tubes of the, the vast difference. They, they tie those tubes, eh? which also brings the sperms from down up. Mm? Then those tubes are also cut so that they don't come out. They remain there in the water. So, Sister Gertrude, according to you, uh, as a specialist in this department, what is the most recommended family planning method? Recommended by who? No, uh, what do you recommend most? All the methods are recommended. But maybe the long term. I can say I recommend the long term family planning methods. Because as we said, spacing, we prefer someone to space for two years. So why should you come for the injection every after three months? When you are going to space for two years, you can always use the implant for three years or use the IUD for 12 years. You can always remove it, remove it anytime you feel like it. Eh? Getting pregnant. If someone is 30 years mm, mm -hmm. would you, and they want to go for tube ligation or vasectomy, would you advise them to take that decision? Depending how many children do you have, why have you decided? To do a vasectomy or a TA, depending on somebody's reasons. Mm? I would advise. How many children do you have? How old, how old is those children? The first and the last one? Why do you want to perform a TA or a vasectomy? You depend on those reasons. 
At times we find that maybe that mother or that man is not fit for the vasectomy, or the mother is not fit for the subrogation, then you cancel for the, a long term contraceptives like the IUD. Okay. Uh, Sister Gertrude, people out there have very many questions uh, on, the, on the various family planning methods. For instance, the implant. People say that at, after some time it dissolves into the muscles and you cannot see it anymore. It doesn't. It remains there where it was inserted. It doesn't dissolve. Now, where do those people get that information? I can't tell. Those are the misinformation which people have. It doesn't. It stays there where it is inserted. It remains there. And some other people say when they use these family planning methods, uh, they are satellized. They may never, they, they, they find hardships in conceiving. Uh, maybe, not being sterile, but maybe at times you may feel hardship. There are, uh, there are some methods whereby after stopping it, you take a long time to conceive. But in the long run, you conceive like the injection. When you use the injection, some mothers take a long period to conceive. Reverse to fertility, at times it's not easy with the injection. But with other methods, it's okay. But with time, you can see. Okay, uh, Sister Gertrude, what are some of the side effects? Because I understand that there might be side effects uh, that come by these family planning methods. What are some of the side effects you can talk about? Yeah, for example, the other hormonal contraceptives. When I say hormonal contraceptives, I'm talking about the implants for five years and for three years, the injection for three months. Those have the same side effects. Usually there is a change in the menstrual period, menstrual cycle. There's a change in that cycle when you are using the hormonal contraceptives, especially the injection and the, the implants. Some mothers can get prolonged period that someone can bleed for over a month or, or two months. A but, month? Yes, but just little, little. Some can even put a pad or decide not to put a, a pad, but it's there. Some get bleeding on and off. For example, you can get it in the morning, then in the evening you don't get it, or at night you don't get it, or get it at night, during daytime you don't get it. That's on and off, that's irregular bleeding. Some can get a heavy flow. A heavy flow like someone bleeds heavy with the clothes, a lot of blood. So that one is alarming, you have to visit the, the doctor or the family planning clinic. Some can get spotting, when I talk of spotting, drops on the knee, just to see a drop on the knee. A drop of blood? Yes, a drop of blood. I'm talking about blood. Then, some can get loss of libido. When I, take, I talk about loss of libido, you lose loss of desire for sex. Completely, someone doesn't want. And that is why very many people are dropping the family planning mm -hmm. methods because they think their families are breaking because of Of course, that. it breaks the family. And we don't do family planning. We are fam planning the family. We don't want a family to break. That's why we tell them, come, we cancel any problem, please come, any concern, please come and see what we can do. Whether there is treat give treatment or whether we change or whether you talk. And if I prefer the lady to come with the partner which is very difficult, they don't have that <laughs> uh, Some do experience uh, amenorrhea, no bleeding at all. When you are given the injection or when you are inserted the implant, for the three years you don't get injection. Or for some months you don't, I mean you don't get uh, periods. Or for some months you don't get periods. That is amenorrhea. And some can get experience some um, headaches, some nausea, especially when you have just started using the method. 
At times, those things wear up when the method is used with your body. Some continue like that, changing those side effects. This one comes, you rest it, the other what one What about comes, obesity? And some can also, yeah, they can get excessive weight gain. That one also is there, especially on the injection. So, when someone sees these side effects, should they come back to the hospital and you advise on? Yes, that's what we always tell them. In the case of these changes, you feel you are not comfortable with the any change, you come back to the hospital and see what you can do. That's what we always advise them. Come back to the hospital in case of any changes. And the side effects for the, the pills, because also it is a short-term method, and those ones are not in many. There is dizziness, palpitations, headaches, especially in the first three months when you have just started swallowing the pills. Usually they wear off when the pills are used to your body. That's around three months. But also when you have the issue and you feel you are not comfortable, you always come back for advice. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, Dr. Sister Gifford, as we are winding up, what is your last word to the mothers out there concerning family planning? Uh, what I can say is please, please, mothers, you come to hospital or any health center, you ask for a family planning clinic and get information, full information about family planning other than getting the information from friends. You can always and you start using family planning because there is no way you can deliver up to death. So please come to a family planning clinic. We talk, we cancel you and we see what you can do so that you remain healthy, you get healthy children, you get a happy life and the community as well as the nation at large. Thank you so much, Sister Gertrude. And maybe as, as mothers go to the hospital, they should also be accompanied by the husbands so that you get full information together. But we are grateful. Uh, thank you so much for the time. Thank you so much uh, for educating the, the nationals. People out there are really uh, appreciative Thank you so much for the initiative. And we also credit Makere University School of Public Health for having created a platform for people to learn a lot of things that they would have not gotten anywhere. And thank you so much you who has been watching us from the beginning up to now. Remember, this program shall be repeated on Wednesday at exactly 8.30 a.m. Therefore, if you've just joined in, tune on. Tune in on Wednesday at exactly 8.30 a.m. You'll watch a full uh, recap. Edwin Austin Mukalazi is my name. Sister Gertrude Sentongo, our specialist today. And Mebo Murunji, our sign language interpreter. Jonah Jal on the camera. Bantam in transmission. And Tony Santo on social media. Enjoy your weekend and good night.